God is doing something new in our midst. And our prayers is that anybody who be a hindrance, you will be cut off. Amen? He has started something new. And it will come to pass and it will manifest. But our prayers is that anybody who be a hindrance will be cut off. In the name of Jesus, I believe it that it shall come to pass. May you prepare your heart as we call on the man of God. You see, the devil is trying to mess up our speaker system. He is alive, but he is defeated. Amen. In the midst of our troubles, he will rise. In the midst of our problems, Jesus will rise. So, in the midst of our technical problem this afternoon, Jesus will rise. There are many lives that have been destroyed by the earthquake. There are many who are without homes. Those who cannot find their loved ones. And therefore, if you and I can sit here with a fan on, in air condition, sitting on a pad of peas, amen, amen, we need to make much noise to the Lord, amen. To worship with us. I want to thank my dear sister, Minister of the Gospel in May, once again visiting us. Hallelujah. It's been a long, long time. So good to have you here. Amen. And I also want to thank my neighbor, Mr. Patrick, is in the house. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'll lead a consolation chapter too. Thanks for having me. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. What a spirit, the spirit of God is moving around, amen. And uh, you know, when you have leaders backing you, when the members backing you, you know, you have a big head, right? Yes. And that's what I'm so blessed. And, you know, they, they started taking their seats. Yes. When they should be taking it, amen. We have to add more seats so yes. that all the leaders will be here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you can't be here, we need to talk about that. <laughs> God bless. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for this honor. Give me an O Lord, to come up and sit at your feet. Yes, sir. In the midst of all the crisis and the chaos, Lord, your children purposely have chosen to come and worship you. And out of our worship, O Lord, may you pour forth your blessings on us. That Lord, we too will be a blessing unto others in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, within this short time that we are going to uphold your word, we ask that you will open our eyes so that we may behold thy wonderful things out of your Lord. The Lord, as we depart from here this afternoon, we will live here as victims, O oh God. Brother, we live here as victorious people, overcomers in the Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And you, devil, listen to us by the authority given to us from our heart. Through Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we command you to part and live now in the mighty name of Jesus This is not your place. Your place is in the hands. We command you to go there now. Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, have your own way. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you all so much. And I'm not going to take much of your time because we've already, you know, praise God and worship Him and have been blessed through the song ministrations. Amen. And the word that was read to us. Amen. 
This morning, once again, we are embarking upon the journey that we began this year as we study the book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew. And now, the point is, we are to us how we this year, so we are the chance here that we might you as a panel, a moon and a day yet to us. So, as we continue on this journey, last week, as many of you may remember, Jesus and the three guys, John, Peter, and James, right? Experience a moment on a mountain top. Amen. And many of you may be aware that we began the Lent season. A season of 40 days as we wait and experience the awesome presence of the living God. As Jesus was preparing, you know, for the ministry that was before him, God took him to the mountain top. And in the midst of the chaos, Peter says something that I believe he regrets saying. Because as we know Peter, he usually says things that he don't really think about first of all. Amen. Like many of us. So when he saw the presence of Elijah, right, and Moses, the law and the prophet, Peter said, Lord, isn't it good for us to be right here? Let me build for you shelters, right? And we will remain here forever and ever. Peter was perplexed, he was shocked. And in the midst of that, when he finally shut up, amen. You see, when things are really raging against us, when the storms of life against us, sometimes it's hard to even think straight, right? When you have lost your job or your business or your loved one, you know, the mind cannot really get together. And sometimes you may be tempted to say something that you really don't mean it. Amen. 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 So Peter somehow said something that he really didn't mean it. He was confused. Brothers and sisters, in our confused state, let us be quiet and see what the Lord is doing. In the midst of the storms, as we have experienced happening in Japan, in Rye, in our offshore, I mean West Coast, right? Many have begun saying so many things, but brothers and sisters, let us be quiet in the midst of the storm, because God may be saying something that we need to hear, hallelujah. Amen. And when he stopped talking, the voice, a thunderous voice from a high king, this is my son, whom I love, listen to him, hallelujah. Amen. This is my son, whom I love, Listen to him. So we learn that God really don't want us to show up in church or just have good feelings in church. Rather, God wants us to what? Listen to his instructions. Hallelujah. Amen. God wants us to what? Obey him. So you will be a Japanese be playing until the next summer. It's what? Hallelujah. Amen. It's nothing. When we do all the jumpings and all the hoopla and everything, and we don't obey the word of the Lord, we are nothing before Him. Brothers and sisters, this afternoon we continue on the same path as we look at Matthew chapter four, verse one through eleven. As it was read so eloquently to us. Can you imagine? Jesus, after experiencing an awesome baptism, right? From the river Jordan, not long ago, he experienced a mountain of what? Hallelujah. Situation on the mountain top with his father, where he declared an affair. To him, he is his beloved son. Can you imagine just right after this great, you know, upliftment, affirmation, now he's taken out to a place called wilderness. Yes. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine after finally being given a position on the job? Can you imagine after getting to the beloved wife or husband that you have dreamt all your years, right? Have you, can you imagine finishing all your degrees and you are receiving your certificate 
And all of a sudden, something drastic happens. How do you prepare for that? Can you imagine those in Japan taking their sleep, being swept away by the storms? Can you imagine that? Brothers and sisters, situations in life come. Things come unprepared to us. We wonder what is going to happen next. Where is the next meal coming from? Am I going to hold on to my job next month? When am I going to get my life together? Things happen in this life. Life is monotonous. Life is full of what? Challenges and trials. But in the midst of it all, God may be up to something good. Hallelujah. And found the Ecuador Summoning now. I showed every group. Now who want every tunnel? On the way here, be be hallelujah. And as you all know, as I talk to this message, overcoming all. Overcoming all. Say to your neighbor, say neighbor. Yeah. Overcoming all. Overcoming all. I don't know what you are going through, but you are an overcome. Hallelujah. Yeah. Overcoming all. Oh, to me, I want to be biased. No matter what comes your way. Yeah. Jesus, great upliftment, confirmation. Yes. Now the word says, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, took him to the wilderness to be what? Tempted by the devil. Can you believe this? How can a loving God put his own loving son to be tempted? Hallelujah. You wonder sometimes how you and I may say, God, you say, how can I go through this as a Christian, right? Why should this happen to me? Why did I lose my wife? Why did I get sick? Why did I lose my job? Why do people hate me? Why, 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 why? Brothers and sisters, thank you to my neighbor. Yeah. Just be quiet. Just be quiet. And wait for the voice of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Be quiet before the Lord. Amen. 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 When the Spirit took Jesus to the wilderness, the Bible says that he fasted and prayed how many days? 40 days and 40 nights. And physically, that is the average that a man can go. After that, there is death. Amen. Amen. Why should God do this? Why should God do this? Maybe you are questioning God in your own life now as you said. God, why me? I think I'll be better off being in the world than being in the church. God, why is better off being in Ghana or my own town than being in America? You will great of where you are now. Brothers and sisters, don't be alarmed. Amen. Amen. Because God is about to be something. Amen. 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 But the Bible says that the secret things belong to God. Yes. But the things revealed are for us and our children. In order to understand what God is doing in the midst of the storm, you must spend time with God. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. So, person in the in the As we began this 40 days and 40 nights, in our church, we set aside 21 days. Hallelujah. Amen. Just half of what Jesus did. How many of you have started fasting? Praise the Lord. God bless you. If somebody didn't fast, Encourage that brother, brother, you can do it. Amen. Amen. It's time to close the refrigerator, right? <laughs> it's time to let go of certain things so that you and I can be in close proximity with Jesus Christ. Because if we don't feel this physical body, what happens? 
He dies. So it is, if we don't feed the, the spirit within us, right, the spirit will not be able to work, work in us and live through us. The fruit of the spirit is the word of God. Hallelujah. Jesus, the secret is this. Jesus was about to determine the eternal what? Faith of every person who had ever lived or ever will live on the face of the earth. Do you know what was before him? The devil knew it. That this person has come to take away my what? Position. Yes. Right? Yes. Everything that I, I have taken, he is coming, right? To take them away. And I'm not going to let him get it free. Hallelujah. Yes. Brothers and sisters, the devil knows your potential. Yes. The devil knows that you want to overcome. Yes. But in order to destroy that, he will come and tempt you yes. on every point. Yes. Jesus knew it. He was about to launch his ministry. Uh -huh. Ministry that will bring salvation to all my kind. Yes. The devil hated that. Likewise in your own life, maybe you're about to overtake something in your life. You're about to be given a position. You're about to get married. You're about to be given something extraordinary beyond even the law. Yes. But there's some struggles along the way. Amen. There are some challenges along the way. Don't look at those situations. Look at God. Hallelujah. Don't look at those situations. Look at who? God. So Jesus had to prepare himself. And in order to do that, he had to work fast and pray for 40 days. Brother and sister, the kingdom of God is not butter and bread. Amen? Amen. The kingdom of God is not what? Butter and let me say that about it. I mean, and your panel and the bag. Amen. What's that? I'm not going to mention that. I saw you say that. But butter. How do you say hello in God and in G? Hello. Oh. <laughs> no, that's not you. <laughs> that's what I'm going to say right now. Good. How are you doing? The kingdom of God is not what? Butter and bread. Amen. Amen. It calls us to what? Wait fast before the Lord. When Jesus was determined, he had to prepare mentally, physically, and what? Spiritually. Brothers and sisters, we need to prepare our hearts, our minds, everything what? Before the Lord. Yes. Physically prepare yourself. Mentally prepare yourself. Spiritually prepare yourself. Hallelujah. Since you who since you who since you who because the war before you is not carnal. Hallelujah. For the Bible says that for the battle of our warfare are not what? Carnal. But they are mighty, right? And how can you fight that war if you don't prepare yourself? Amen. Jesus knew what was before him. Yes. What do you say? But we watch you. Go to point. To fully. Yes, we did. Ah, God bless you. Hallelujah. Fast and grow, fast and be. And you must have been in the paper once. Right? You have not even experienced those moments in your life. The battle is tough. The situations are tough. You have lost your job. Love, whatever it is, it's about telling you and I really went down on knees and prayed and fast before God. The king of God. It's not to what that it's not suffered what violence by the men of violence what taken by force. Yes. Jesus had to prepare 40 days and 49 seconds. As soon as he finished, guess what? The devil works, right? The devil comes at our weakest leg. Yes. Amen. Amen. The devil will always come to you at your weakest what? Yes. Leg. Uh -huh. 40 days. Now, if you fast from 6 to 6, especially when it gets to 3 o'clock, 
Hallelujah. Only the spirit knows. There you are saying, oh, that the, 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 the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. And if you are not careful, if you are in the house, you will open the fridge to back and forth, right? Hallelujah. Temptation is everywhere. And the devil comes to us at our weakest link. He knew that he was angry. So guess what he said as soon as he came up. Now, if you, you see, are the son of God, why not you? I know you were angry. That there is no restaurant, no McDonald's. It's going to take you a while for you to get there. So just change the stone into bread, right? Wasn't that a good offer? After all, he was the son of God. You see the secret? There are many who don't believe that Jesus is the son of God. So sad, even the devil knows that Jesus is the son of God. Hallelujah! What a shame on people! What a shame on America that there are so many who are trying to get rid of God in, in God we trust. Yeah. And they say there is no God. You know why? Because they are confused. Anyone who is an atheist is disturbed. Because they want to have their own way. And because they can't have their own way, they want to make something up. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 So they say there's no God. If there's no God, why don't you live in God after you trust Him? Amen. Amen. If you don't believe in something, why should you worry about it? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, in our weakest link, it comes. Good offer. Why am angry? What would you do? Just tell me. What would you do? Knowing that you're angry. <laughs> Hallelujah! Put your time in the chair that as soon as we get off from there, we really can't wait to get to the doorstep to get some drinks and that, right? What would you do? Guess what he says, sir? You brought your Bibles, right? Yes, sir. It is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by from the mouth of God, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. It is what? Written. Yahshua said, and your power no good, and so the power of 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 the man of the power of Wow. Brothers and sisters, what do you say to the devil? when you are being tempted. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus referred to what? The scripture. The man should not be by bread alone. When you are tempted, when you are troubled, when you are troubled, what do you do? Who do you call? Do you even have the Bible by your side? Do you even open it? Do you even study your word? Many of us have our Bibles at the back of our cars, right? Many under our pillows, and yet we have it open them. Brothers and sisters, in order to overcome the enemy, you must know the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But I love it. Guess what? It wasn't long when the devil said, okay, now I got that. I got that part. Hallelujah. Amen. So let, let's be careful. Then the devil took him to the holy city, right? Jerusalem. And set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And said to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written. Are you with me? Yes, sir. He will command his angels concerning you. And on your hands they will bear you up. Lest your stri you, you strike your foot against a stone. What is happening here? Now the devil too is saying, brother, I also know the Bible. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, sometimes we behave as if the devil don't know anything about the Bible. Yes. The devil knows that Jesus is the Son of God. And by the mention of his name, everything shall bow. So the Bible says that he shudders, right? Who is he being told that? He knows the word. And he said, You quoted me, right? I know it too. It is written. You 
you just throw yourself on this pinnacle, right? And because it's written that he will command his angels to what? Come and hold you up so that you don't hit yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. You know how the devil comes to us? He don't come one time. He don't come just once a week. He comes multiple of times. He comes at all times. Wow. For Jesus to throw himself from the pinnacle. You know how some believers are doing even in our modern day? The Bible says that we shall walk on scorpions, right? Yeah. And snakes, yeah. and they will not bite us. Yeah. And there is a church in America and other places that are playing with scorpions and lizards and I mean snakes, right? And guess what? The snake has been biting them. <laughs> Amen. You see the news everywhere. Only every one. Everyone is when you are touching. You'll be touched by the Holy Spirit. And they die. You see? But the Bible says that for lack of knowledge, my people will perish. There are some who will come to you. If you are the Christian, you will just stay where you are. Right? Ah, we are a Christian. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> in the Hallelujah. The devil will come to you with many offers. And sometimes they, they may come to even discourage you, right? From reaching your goal. Jesus said, before that response, guess what? The devil is quoted. You see? Some late one. That wasn't the meaning of it. Then jump yourself and then just will come. No, 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 that's not the meaning. But the devil thought he had it right. Jesus knew it. Why? Because he spent time with the Father. Hallelujah. So he said, hey, no, you haven't done the first two. Now this is this is all. I owe everything. I just want you to do one thing for me. If you do it, if you just buy just two seconds, right? Everything is yours. If you just worship me, hallelujah. But this is there's something here. Even the devil wants to be worshipped. Amen. You know why he was kicked out from heaven? Because when he saw how the rest of the angels were worshiping God, he wanted to be like God. Become like God. But nobody can share the glory of the Lord. No matter what. The devil is so jealous about worship. That is why there is always confusion in our choirs, in our singing ministries. That somebody may come with a new song and before you realize the person is not going to be saved. Right? The devil is destroying the very fabric. Of the Christian life, God demands worship. God demands worship, and they that worship Him must worship Him in truth and in spirit. That is why I don't take lightly that when it comes to worship and praises, and some people are doing it anyhow, my heart began begin to pound. I said, Lord, forgive us, for we know not what we do. When some of us begin to show it off, worship is not about us. Singing is not about us. Worship is for God. In the old tradition, if there is a king coming to sit, right? I mean, in the public you know, state, the king is just saying, that's something, you know, because of my son, you know, I, I know a little bit about that. What's the upper kind of man? That kind of, what do you call the parachute? What is the upper kind of man? Amen. 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 Whatever you call it, it's been a long time. <laughs> you know, when they sit in that way, the king will be doing this, right? Right? All belongs to me. Right? Left and right. Left and right. Amen. But really, <laughs> is it true? Amen. 
And you see some people coming back, they may never free at two. And we are kidding. Right? Hallelujah. If there be any person on this earth who needs our worship, it's the Lord. Hallelujah. Only God alone deserves our worship. So when we come to worship Him, give all that you have. This is what the psalmist said. I will worship with the Lord with all my heart, with all my being. Let everything within me what? Praise his holy name. Even the devil wants to be worshipped. And guess what Jesus said to him? Get behind me, devil. The point is this. In a literal way, Jesus was saying, Enough is enough. Hallelujah. Enough is enough. You've been a hindrance to me. Enough is enough. Brothers and sisters, it's time to turn to the devil and say, Devil, there's no more argument. There's no more what? Coaches. Amen. Enough is enough. Get behind me. There are many who are still condoling and connecting with the enemy. On my back, I was at the end of the night. You come Right? Hold on, wait. I'm going to a restaurant about 930, but that's what you're wrong. Christian brother and Christian sister. Tell that brother, is that enough? Hallelujah. Brother says, this is serious. Whatever temptation that you are going through, whatever has been a hindrance, it's about time you say to yourself, enough is enough. If somebody has been bothering you, if somebody is trying to block your blessings, it's about time you say, enough is enough. When Jesus said to them, enough is enough, guess what? He packed and left. Yes. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as I bring to this with us, where have you been tempted? Mm. Temptation comes all around us. The Christian life is not butter and bread. It's a life of sacrifice. It's a life of prayer and fasting. It's a life of determination. Temptation will come at all costs. But remember, you are an overcomer. When Joseph found himself alone in Potiphar's house, nobody was there. That was a great offer. That was an excellent offer. But Joseph said, How can I sin against my God? Brothers and sisters, there are temptations, temptations everywhere, especially in America. Temptations on the job, temptations in the church, temptations at home, when nobody is there in the house, and you are on the computer, there is temptation. On the job, there is temptation. At the malls, there is temptation. Even in the church, there is temptation. But remember, you are a overcomer. Yeah, the big castle. When they instructed the two meal in our basket. Now me and let us say, say, or so man so can be a mouse so I don't want more than to be overcome. Hallelujah. That he will give you power to overcome every temptation that will come. Maybe somebody is tempting you in this church. You are built with anger, frustration. Maybe in your home there is no peace of mind. You are being tempted. On the job, you can't have no peace of mind to do your work. You are tormented from both sides, left and right, back and forth. Remember, 
The one who is in you is greater than the one that is in the world. You are on the back end. There's a story that I heard and I would like to retell the same story again. There was a farmer who went out to farm. And along the way, he came across an egg. The egg was quite different. He picked the egg, came home, put it under one of his you know, chickens, right? The hens. And lo and behold, the day came and the eggs were hatched. And he observed carefully that the egg that he brought was quite unique. Even though it was like one of the chickens, but it wasn't a chicken. They all grew together, they ate together. But one day, that particular egg, look, saw himself. I don't look like them. There are some birds flying over there. But I think I'm still a chicken. He continued that. Then one day the farmer said, No, you are not a chicken. You are an eagle. So God cried with He said, No, no, I'm a chicken. I've been eating, I was born here, raised here, eating my chicken. I'm chicken. I can't fly. The farmer tried many times. Then one day, he lifted the window on the hill and said, You can fly. Release the eagle. And that's why the eagle began soaring. Amen. Unfortunately, there are many who have the potential of an eagle, but we are living like chicken. May you thank you once a neighbor. Yeah. You are not a chicken. Yeah. You are an eagle. Yeah. Yeah. It's time to fly. It's time to work. Yeah. It's time to work. It's time to work. Let us go. Maybe you see yourself so weak. Maybe you see yourself so tormented, so troubled. You are saying to yourself, maybe it's over. I can't make it in this life. I'm alone. There's no hope for me. But it says, sisters, you are an overcomer. You are not a chicken. You are an eagle. Yeah. God has built you with that potential. You can overcome every stormy sin in your life if and only if you will give your life to Jesus. As the farmer lifted to me, the eagle, so has Jesus come to lift us up. If you will give your life to him, if you become where the Lord, left to me alone, I can overcome this. But with you on my side, I know I can fly and soar like an eagle. If you want to do that, pray that there is a Lord, I need you every hour. I need you every hour in my life. Because the temptations are coming. As a young girl, as a single person, Maybe on the job, in your own home, in your house, temptations are everywhere. You want to do what is right before God, but it's, you are being pulled to the other side. Remember who you are and for who you are. You are somebody in Christ. You are overcome. Give your life to Him and you will never be the same. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I also ask you to continue running the race. Don't give up. Don't let the devil quote you with any scriptures. Stand firm. For your light is right at your doorsteps. Very soon, God will do something great. As soon as Jesus passed the test, the Bible says that the angels of the Lord and minister to him. Brothers and sisters, when you and I are able to pass the test before us, all the angels who come wrap their arms around us and they'll be shouting to us, Bravo! 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 Congratulations! Congratulations! Congratulations!
God's wishes. The day is coming when Jesus will congratulate those who remain faithful to him. Would you be one of those persons that Jesus will say, thank you, thank you for not surrendering to the plans of the enemy. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your word. There are so many temptations around us. But this after Lord, you have taught to us that indeed we are overcomers. Help us in our times of weakness to be strong, to be bold, to be the overcomers. So that on that day, when you call us up here, we will be able to hear that voice saying, Come to me, you who have been faithful.